starts now. And we begin here at noon with breaking news. The Pardon and Parole Board has been weighing clemency for death row inmate Richard Glossop all morning long. That vote just coming in. Now, he is set to be executed May 18th for the murder of Barry Van Trees. News 9's Dana Hurtnick, he has been listening in. You just stepped away to give us a bit of an update here, Dana. Yes, thank you, Lisa. And I believe we have a live look in right now um, of that proceeding. But again, this is a highly unusual proceeding. Okay, I'm told that we cannot listen in, but this is a highly unusual proceeding in the fact that both the defense attorneys and the state are arguing for clemency. Less than an hour ago, the family of Barry Van Trees began. You have the information. There's them we there, and this is the first time we have heard from them in several years. Donna Van Trees tearfully told the story of her husband's murder and what his loss has meant to them. Okay, Dana, I think we're having a bit of technical difficulties here. We're not able to hear you, so I can kind of relay some of the information that you've been passing along, and that is that uh, the family had an opportunity to speak to the board, and, and she said that uh, her family wants justice. She added that they don't feel justly represented at today's proceeding. And speaking on behalf of Glossop was his attorney, Don Knight, and also Attorney General Gentner Drummond. I want to acknowledge how unusual it is for the state to support a clemency application of a death row inmate. I'm not aware of any time in our history that an attorney general has appeared before this board and argued for clemency. I'm also not aware of any time in the history of Oklahoma when justice would require it. Our desire and our hope today is that justice will be served for our beloved Barry and that you will take into consideration our statements. Okay, you're hearing it right from there. Now, we also listened to uh, Richard Glossop. He had 20 minutes to speak to the Pardon and Parole Board today. Uh, he teared up while addressing the board. He made several statements, one that uh, particularly hit home. Uh, I am not a murderer, and I don't deserve to die for this. He took an opportunity to thank several who did the independent review of his case, as well as... Um, speaking directly to the Van Trees family. That's where he started in his 20 minutes to speak. He told them uh, what your family has gone through, no one should have to go through. He also apologized for any undue harm, for any statements he had made early on in the case out of his fear. Um, and then he said that he was grateful for his wife, Leah, who had been through everything with him. And again, if you're just joining us, uh, the breaking news coming from the Pardon and Parole Board denying clemency for Richard Glossop. If we can, I'd like to bring in Dana Hurtnick as she had the opportunity to listen in to the entire Pardon and Parole Board meeting. Dana, if you can, tell us a little bit about uh, what you heard Gettner Drummond speak to. Yeah, Lisa, um, he talked a lot about, Gettner Drummer didn't really speak a whole lot, but he did allow the two people that were, the two independent investigations into the Glossop case present their case. Uh, he talked about uh, one of the investigations, talked about how they thought that Glossop did not get a fair trial, um, and actually both investigators said that, uh, that they don't, they believe the Glossop got a fair trial. Also, Gettner Drummond um, had said that this is highly unusual, as you heard in his sound there, that he would be arguing on uh, behalf of clemency. But once again, both Gettner Drummond and uh, Glossop's attorneys were both arguing for clemency today. The only people that were arguing against it was uh, Barry Vandries' family. Lisa. You know, and, and Drummond speaking to the board is a very rare move, as you mentioned, saying that, you know, uh, he has some concerns about the fairness of the trial, and he said that's not often that you've heard that happen before. And so he had asked for them to consider uh, some of the things that had come out of the two independent reviews, and right. they made a pretty quick decision today. The Pardon Parole Board, yeah, and I think a lot of people might find that a little... Um, unbelievable that both the state and the defense attorney were asking for clemency and the board denied clemency. Okay, I think it's very important that we, our Angelisa Bruton was actually at the Pardon and Parole Board meeting. We know that the Van Trees family had an opportunity to speak to the Pardon and Parole Board, and it's my understanding now she is uh, speaking with the Van Trees family. We want to go out live now to Angelisa Bruton as she interviews the Van Trees family. Okay, now I'm hearing we do not have that, but we're working to get that for you. We know that there is a uh, press conference with them right now. To make sure that our family and our, we're being represented 
and we have not had that feeling as of late, but we have had others that have canceled us and to make sure that now we feel like they have all done their, their fair share and we have had two trials, two jurors, two sets of prosecutors. Um, all of our judges are passed away. Um, Judge Twyla Gray is wonderful. She was, she was this person. She read these scripts. She said she came through after the second trial and it had totally changed her opinion. So we appreciate them. We appreciate the jurors that were there that came and spoke to us afterwards. And they were all 100% unanimously in their decision to convict. And this has been this has been a real process for us to know that there are other people out there that have our best interest at heart as a family, as victims that needed to be heard. And, um, you know, I just, I appreciate everyone at the AJ's office. There are several that have been with us through this entire process. One came back out of retirement to be with our family to help us through this. And we so much appreciate her. And, uh, she has been our rock through all this. So we appreciate you. Donna, and this is, yes. I'm sorry, I wanted to ask you about uh, General Drummond's decision. Um, and do you feel like he adequately conveyed to you and your family why he made that decision? Yes and no. He went through, he said the point was that for the mental health issues, they both have mental health issues. And that's, and if you can set, he said, through the legal mm -hmm. system, they said it's null and void. Through the ethics committee, yes, they said there was a problem. I wanna make sure that the state of Oklahoma is right in this. And I appreciate him doing that. Him telling him he corrected at the end that he did tell Alana and myself that he believed 100% wholeheartedly that he was convicted of the murder. And that's kind of threw us for a loop this morning. We did not know that that's the way the AG's office was going to go on this. Um, let's speak to you. What's your first name? Alana, Alana Vantrese Maletto, um, A-L-A-N-A, V-A-N-T-R-E-E-S-E-M-I-L-E-T-O. I'm Barry's sister. We uh, have a, a brother also that is still alive that um, is uh, wanted to be here to, to, to take advantage of the opportunity to be a part of this today. I just wanted to say that the main thing that I wanted to convey today is that we felt so betrayed by the uh, Oklahoma Attorney General Drummond because he had said he was, I said, I have one question for you, sir, in our conversation when we were standing there together at, on, on the conference call. And I said, well, I have one question for you, sir, is are you going to fight for our family? And he said, yes, me and our office are gonna fight for you. And then, as Donna said, he said that he believed that Glossop was guilty of this. And then he went directly, directly to the media and said the opposite. It was just such a betrayal of us. And normally the Attorney General's office has always stood to defend our side of this, our, not just our side, but the truths that are were discovered in both trials of this. And so it is such a betrayal and I, I contacted him about it and I told him, excuse my language, I said, and I'm not really supposed to say this, but I said, what the hell? You know, what, why would you do this? And so I respect that he feels his way about this. He does, I said, sir, we were at every trial. We heard every word. We had all these, all of these jurors that had to be convinced. And as we know in the state of Oklahoma that you know, you, you're, not, you're dismissed as a juror if you cannot honestly give the death penalty and feel that is warranted. 
And so all of these people, as Donna said, that came after the trial and spoke to us personally to personally give their opinions of how they were convinced that Glossop not only facilitated this, but he covered it up. And my sister was there right out when, very, when Donna was calling, this is probably too long, but when <laughs> Donna was calling all of us to see where is Barry, where is Barry, and she sent, you know, our family that lived in Oklahoma sent, went to the hotel, the motel, and was looking all over, searching for Barry. My sister was there, my uncle was there, and Richard Glossop knew, we learned in the trial, that he had already been in the room. He, he knew Barry's body was laying there, covered with the covers, and that they had, they had turned the air conditioner down, and they had, it was January 7th, and they had turned the air conditioner down all the way, and they had broken the key off in the door. And then when, when, when Sneed went back, the signal that we, were, that we heard, the signal that, that the job was finished was that he knocked on the door of the manager's wall there, and he went to his room at the motel and took a shower, cleaned up, put his, he had a black eye in the, then in, from the fight as the fight ensued, and there was blood all over the room, and he t went to, back to his room and he put his bloody clothes in a coffee can and then hid them in the motel. And so then, but what my point was is that Richard Glossop stood there with our family, just feet away from Barry's body laying right there in the room. And then he had sent, he gave direction to, to Snead to go, you know, get the plexiglass to cover the window, to do all of these other things. And I just praise God in heaven above that part of their plan was to get, his orders were to get garbage bags, muric acid, and a hacksaw. We are one of the families that did find our body, our, our Barry's body. That's just, I mean, there are things about this that have not come out, but we have kept quiet as a family because we trusted our, our judicial system and the people that had represented us and the attorney generals attorneys that were not allowed to be here today to fight for us. What is wrong with this situation? That's it. That's all there is to say. But it's thank you for hearing our side of the story. Those behind uh, Glossip have pretty much exhausted all of their attempts. Uh, what is your message to uh, the governor or anyone else that uh, could potentially maybe step in in some way? for the next execution. I can speak to that. I think the message would be to... Uh, this is Lee Van Treese. Come right here. <clears throat> Lee Van Treese, I'm Barry's nephew. And I would say it's a simple answer that his job is to execute the laws that were voted in place by the people of the state of Oklahoma. That's it. And you don't think he's done that? That's his job when this comes to his, his, to his plate. I wanted to ask and one. we've done that in an exhaustive way over the last 25 years. So, yeah. I just wanted to ask one question about the family. Is there any uh, sense of injustice in the fact that the actual killer is in prison and will never, never, you know, never get out? But, but the fact that, that he gets to live his life out in prison and, and Blossom now will be executed. I don't think it's fair to speak to my entire family in that matter. How about you, Donna? Does that bother you? <clears throat> I won't speak for the entire family, I'll only speak for myself on this. Did Barry have a chance to live the rest of his life? And Golosov has been a manipulator, and it is proven that he has been with Sneed. When, he, when the conviction was overturned and he was sent back to the Oklahoma County Jail, there was a jailer there that Judge Twyla Gray said, you need to go back and be reschooled on this because you are not to make friends with the inmates. And so here it is. Again, Glossop manipulated. manipulated this young man. He was 24, 25 years old. So he is a manipulator. And it doesn't mean that you can be fine all your life like they put in. And then all of a sudden, 
There's been lots of it. My kids raised without a father. The statistics are, and we just discussed this the other day, that children raised by both parents are less likely to ever spend time in jail. Parent, children that are raised with a father only are less likely to spend time in jail. Children that are raised by a single mother are at a higher rate to spend time in jail. I made sure that that did not happen to any of my children. And I stand behind it. And this is what it is when people, you cannot allow people to manipulate you. And that's what he's done. May I also speak to your question? Sure. Yes. My name is Carrie Jarbo, C-A-R-R-I-E-J-A-R-B-O-E. For me personally, I feel like Justin Sneed has been remorseful and has, I believe, has apologized to our family for what he did and what we all know he did. He did actually commit the murder, but we've never had an apology until, I guess there was sort of one today, but it's a long time coming for that apology from Mr. Glossop. And he has just continued to follow his lies throughout his life. And that, I believe, I don't speak for everybody, but for myself, that is why I feel like he is the right one to go to the death penalty or get the death penalty. And the very sneeze, correct. Correct. And I feel like if that does happen, then justice will have been served for all of us. And it's fine by me that Mr. Sneed spend the rest of his life in jail for what he did and what he knows he did and I feel like that's fair. Thank you. I was going to ask about the apology. So today was the first time you guys have heard any type of apology from him? Yes, that is correct. What did you guys think, you know, sitting here listening to that? Laughable. Mm -hmm. no, I really feel like that his apology today was sincere. I do. I feel like that he has had a lot of... I wrote him a letter in prison, and I wanted to just tell him that um, I think he's an intelligent man, that he has aligned himself with all the right people in this. Uh, you know, nobody could write the story of what has happened in this case. It has, we have been in the room minutes away from the execution. It's, it's not totally one-sided, just him feeling this. We've been minutes away. And how would you like to be the director of the prison to have to come in to the room and tell our family that the state of Oklahoma had the wrong drug combination. How would you like to, how would you like to be that? And then our family, that was just, that was just unbelievable that that could happen. And so yet again, we wanted to make sure that, you know, everything was going according to Hoyle in a way it should be, and we trusted the system. And, and still, over and over and over, you know, we, we <clears throat> honestly, we're victims as well. We've been in prison this entire time with this situation. And it, I don't mean to, I mean, we've kept quiet. We've tried to do the right thing. We've tried to take the high road. We've tried to not make, um, accusations on this or that and I'm telling you this last week whenever this happened I, it was just devastating to know that Okay, we are hearing from Barry Van Treese's family following the Oklahoma State Pardon and Parole Board's decision to deny clemency for Richard Glossop who is set to be executed in May for the murder of Barry Van Trees. We heard the family say that they felt his apology today was sincere, um, but I think they said it was a long time coming. Yeah, for sure. Glossop has maintained his innocence this whole time. He even said today that he is not a murderer. We do have the results of that vote. It, it was a two to two vote with uh, Richard Smotherman 
um, refusing to re not voting, recusing, recusing right. himself to from that vote. So a 2-2 vote is a tie, which means they need majority to get clemency, um, which means clemency denied for Richard Glossop, and he is still set to be executed on May 18th. That will be his third last meal if it moves that far. Of course, his attorney has still said that uh, he will appeal the Court of Criminal Appeals decision to the U.S. Supreme Court. So there are still some moving parts here before that execution is set. But once again, uh, clemency denied. And I think both uh, Glossop's attorneys and the Attorney General today were hoping that uh, this vote would go a different way. Okay, so. we're going to take a quick break, regroup, and we'll be back after this.